Welcome to this semester's first edition of Breaking Out of the Bubble. I'm your host, Roxy Morris. On this special St. Patrick's Day edition, we thought you'd like to see some sights and sounds from a course in the Emerald Isle. On our way from Belfast to Derry, we stopped at the Coastal Causeway, or we traveled along the Coastal Causeway, but we stopped at this awesome rock formation along the coast that I was skeptical at first that it was not man-made because they gave us a lot of saying like uh, it was made by a volcanic uh, activity underneath it. It came out in these hexagonal formations and all these different like rock pillars along the coast. So I was skeptical at first seeing the pictures because it was absolutely just, it looked like someone had made it because it looked like a sculpture and everything was so geomet geometrically accurate. Immediately when we got there, because it was such a breathtaking scenery, we did we ran right out on the rock. We sat up against the rocks as close as we could to the, the waves crashing into it without getting wet. And we sat there for about like, probably like 20, 30 minutes, like all of us, and just, I don't know, just taking it all in. And that was probably the, the best part of it. I was pretty confident in going across it. It looked small as, from far away as we were like hiking to it. it. Slowly started the gap to get bigger. The wind started to pick up. My heart started to be a little faster. It got closer to it. it start, you saw it start to swing as you got closer and, and definitely started to get a little more scared. I came across and it was super windy and it started to shake. It was very nerve wracking. I looked down once and, and I looked back up and looked back down again. It was it was incredible but scary. It was just breathtaking. It, it's, it's, not, it's very rare that you get to go somewhere and, and see something for the first time. Like growing up, you're in high school for four years, everything is normal. You're in college for four years, everything around you seems kind of plain. And then you go to somewhere new and you take in something for the first time like that and it's absolutely breathtaking. Like you, there's no words for it really, like you just stare. You just try to soak it in as long as you're there. I was really excited to go to Dublin because it's the capital city of the Republic of Ireland and I really love seeing the, the hub of the government and of society in a new country. On Tuesday evening, Professor Winters, myself, Katie, Elise, and Savannah, we went to see An Ideal Husband at the Gate Theatre, which is in downtown Dublin. And An Ideal Husband is a comedy written by Oscar Wilde, who is a native of Ireland, so that was really, really cool to see uh, a play performed in the country where the author is from. When Katie, Autry, Carly, and I were walking around, we, we of course, like look both ways, and because traffic is coming from a different direction because they drive on the other side of the road, where our heads are like spinning, looking all these different ways, and we almost walked out in front of a bus. But you know what? It's okay. We survived, we did well, and uh, from then on we learned to just take it a little bit slower and to um, kind of adopt the slower pace that Dublin has in comparison to the United States. When our class was in Dublin, we stayed in the region of Temple Bar, which is the music and entertainment district, and there was, some of us were staying in a hostel and some of us were staying in an apartment. And the apartment had the most beautiful terrace that overlooked the city and I absolutely loved sitting out there in the morning drinking a cup of tea and just, just enjoying, enjoying the view and, and the environment that I was in. I absolutely loved it. What's really great about Dublin because it is such a large, large city, there's so much to do. And one of my favorite things is just walking around and exploring. When one day we went shopping on Grafton Street, we went to the National Gallery of Ireland and saw some beautiful masterpieces of art. And we went to the Gate Theater to see An Ideal Husband. And shopping, exploring, going to an art museum and going to a theater are my favorite things to do. And I got to do that all in one day in Dublin. So that puts the city pretty high up on my list and we went to Sleeve League and they are the tallest cliffs in Europe and so our goal of the day was just to hike and see the scenery around and spend the day outside. Views from the top were, I don't even think you can describe them really, you can't 
catch them in a photograph or anything. It's something like people say the island's beautiful and they say that it's a great place and the scenery is amazing, but you don't really understand until you're actually there. Run! We see this like bizarre rock thing on the ground and it was like crystallized looking and white and so we thought it was really cool so we decided to break it so Chris grabs the rock and it's like not a small rock and starts throwing it at other rocks to break it and we didn't know like what it was so Johnny was like oh I think it's salt and there's us to lick it it's not salt it tastes awful <laughs> but we all like broke little pieces off and kept them and everything <laughs> We made paper airplanes and we wanted to throw them off the cliff and like watch them, you know, fly down to the water. But instead, when we threw them off the cliff, I guess that where the wind is coming off the ocean, it hits the cliffs, it like sends a wall of air straight up the cliff. So we threw it off the cliff and it, the airplane hits the wall of air and like flies backwards behind us and scares all these sheep everywhere. And the sheep were like running around. To start the hike, we decided to scale the entire mountain on the way up. Like, pretty much rock climbing the whole way, like hanging onto bushes, like pushing each other up, falling down the hill multiple times, barely making up, comfort, like soaked in water because we've been falling up the side of the mountain the whole time. And we finally made it to the top, everyone's like sweating and exhausted. And so we're going back down and we see that the entire time there was a pathway on the other side of the mountain that led just a great path all the way up to the top where we were. So instead of scaling the side of the mountain, we could have just walked up the pathway to the top. It looked like a wonderful academic experience. I know I would love to go one day. So now we're going to come back to America and have a look at some of the traditions we practice here. Our own Mallory Mars is going to give us an idea of the do's and don'ts of St. Patrick's Day fashions. Hi, I'm Mallory Mars, giving you a dose of luck and fashion this week. We have memories of St. Patrick's Day from when we were younger. There would usually be a party in the classroom and your mom would come in and help and then you would do some kind of themed craft and eat some snacks that were most likely to be green. But the most important part of the day was whether or not you were wearing some kind of green. Because if you didn't, that meant some mean kid in the class was going to pinch you because you weren't wearing the color of the holiday. Green has never been my color or my favorite color by any means. So I kind of hate St. Patrick's Day in that regard because I have to wear green. Yet I always find some way to work it into my wardrobe. Smaller choices include anything from green eyeliner, green socks, green nail polish, and some kind of green jewelry. If you're looking for something a little more, you could try a green shoe of some sort. Whether it be a booty or a ballet flat, both are always in style. And if you want to make a big impact, try a dress, pant, or an all-over green outfit. This helped me pick out what I, was, I will be wearing March 17th, and I hope it helped you too. Happy St. Patty's Day, and back to you, Roxy. Thanks, Mallory. I know I'm definitely going to use some of those tips. We turn now to look at some artistic creations at Hanover College, specifically the music of Hanover songwriter Kayla Farino and the film production of Communication Students. As part of a video production class project, students created a music video for Kayla's song, Give, Don't Shove. The assignment goal was to help audiences understand Kayla's personality and inspiration. So look for scenes that show her love for the outdoors, her interest in ceramic arts, and her advice on building healthy relationships. Sometimes in life, just gotta say screw it. Let go of rejection and tell him to forget it. Civilization is messed up, but we don't have to be. All you have to do is breathe, be who you want to be. You call the shots of your own life. You make decisions, you are what's right. It's about the harmony, it's about the love, forget.
for today. Happy to be free. It's about the harmony. It's about the love. Forget the haters. Give no show. It's about the harmony. It's about the love. Forget the haters. Give no show. Now it's time to move closer to Hanover. Our own Kylie Thomas looks at the Hanover News, covering everything from taking the best selfie to academic changes on campus. Yeah, Roxy, there are some exciting changes happening here on campus. Hanover College now has its very own geo filter on Snapchat. When Snapchat users are on campus, they can take a photo, apply the filter, and share with the rest of the world to enjoy. Our first filter features an illustration of the point with Hanover College written across the top. The design launched Monday around midnight. The geo filter quickly became the feature of many student Snapchat stories. From a family photo to a study group, the point is a place for connections. Now that view can help Hanover connect with the rest of the world. To read the full story about this filter and what it means for Hanover, go to the Hanover College Triangle website. This Snapchat filter isn't the only new feature here on campus. Hanover is now offering online summer classes for the very first time. Courses offered include communication, education, economics, and anthropology courses. There will be two different terms. The first term will begin in early June and end in early July. The second term will run from mid-July to mid-August. Tuition will cost $975 for one summer course. Registration for these classes will open March 21st through April 1st. For more information, contact the Registrar's Office. That's it for the news here on campus. I'm Kylie Thomas. Back to you, Roxy. Thanks, Kylie. So, with the temperatures warming up and the snow melting, that means it's time for spring sports. Our own Andrew Fox takes a look at the upcoming sports for the Panthers. Thanks, Roxy. Let's take a look at the men's spring sports. The men's lacrosse team is predicted to finish fifth in the Ohio River Lacrosse Conference according to the preseason poll. They returned Stephen Farrow, Angelo Baturi, and Chad Sabliski, who all received postseason honors from the Ohio River Lacrosse Conference. The men's tennis team is predicted to finish fourth in the Heartland Collegiate Athletic Conference. They returned senior Reed Clark, who played mostly first doubles and second singles last year. The men's track and field season has already begun, and many of the school records have been broken. Senior Joe Feldman now owns the 200-meter dash record. Feldman, Enrico Francini, Gavin Alexander, and Andrew Strong now own the 4x400-meter relay record. Like the men's team, the women's track and field season has already begun. They are currently ranked first in the Heartland Collegiate Athletic Conference. Also in women's sports, the softball team is predicted to finish fourth in the conference. With only the top four teams in the conference advancing to the conference tournament, finishing at least fourth would allow for another chance at the conference title. That's a look at your spring sports. Back to you, Roxy. Thanks, Andrew. With spring on its way, we can't forget about the successes of our winter seasons. Our own Lindsey Burke is going to have a look at the highlights of this past basketball season. Thanks, Roxy. Spring sports are starting, which means winter sports are coming to an end. The men's basketball team made it to the HCAC Conference Tournament, but it did not come without a fight. Here's a look at some of the recent highlights of the season. Starting off with some of the most recent home games this February, Manchester was a close game, only a five-point victory. Top scorer Cameron Fales was all over the place with steals, layups, and assists. Fales brings it in, Van Kluwen off the screen for three. He ended up with a total of 20 points that game. Another big game was Anderson, going all the way into triple overtime. And there we go! P.J. Billups became the center of attention with 23 points. Billups to the hoop. He got it with three seconds to go! But that wasn't the end of big games for Billups. Playing number one Mount St. Joe in the conference, he and Corey Munchmore both ended up with double-doubles. 
Edwards that gets Muchmore another block. That is number four on the evening for Muchmore. While these are just some of the top plays for the recent games, the Panthers had a lot to be proud of for the entire season. I'm Lindsey Burke, and that's all for your basketball highlights. Back to you, Roxy. Well, that wraps up basketball season, and that wraps up our show. I'm Roxy Morris, and have a great holiday. It's about the harmony. It's about the love. Forget the haters. You know, shall It's about the harmony. It's about the love. Forget.